Hello and welcome back and today I want to give a very quick update about everything we know currently about upgraded storage on the PS5. We've got a few little extra bits of information that have come out of CES 2021 and little things that are getting thrown around the internet so I thought to follow up the videos I did a while ago and while all of us are waiting on those down drives we thought we'd just go through and summarize everything so far. So real quick Yes, you still can't expand the storage on your PS5. You knew that before clicking on this video. Of course you did. Right now, that M2 NVMe slot on your PS5 is, you know, doing nothing. Maybe accumulating dust, who knows? But ultimately, you still can't expand. And at the moment, the state of play is you can connect an external drive, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 or Gen 2 drive for all your PS4 stuff. But there's lots of stuff sort of floating around on the internet about a potential firmware update in the interim until drives arrive. The ability to move PS5 drives off uh, PS5 games and uh, data off the central NAS sys uh, the central uh, PS5 system and onto an external drive. You won't be able to play those games, but you will be able to move them to the external storage in order to take advantage of the main space. With the proviso, if you want to play them on the PS5, they will have to be migrated back onto the core storage. You won't be able to play PS5 games off the external storage. Now, they, again, they, I say they say, it's a few websites that are getting thrown around about the idea of this coming in a future update, but again, I can't find much that is official. There's a few things on uh, PlayStation blogs and stuff like that, but nothing really concrete. But I think there's enough to be going on with that this is a viable option that I think a lot of people are waiting on, because leading into our second point, we've still not got NVMe SSDs right now that are fast enough for PS5. Now, I've already talked about this in the other video, but as a quick summary, it's worth highlighting that right now, the PS5, again, is, runs up to a maximum 5.5 gigabytes, that's 5,500 uh, megabytes per second uh, uncompressed and with compressed data. So that's when the data is compressed, moved, unpacked it can go up to a potential 8 to 9 gigabytes or 8,000 to 9,000 gigabytes per second. The issue is, of course, that the modern state of SSDs in NVMe M2, and this is commercially and for the most part in the business sector, looking at M2 NVMe, only goes as high as around five or 6,000. So that's one of the main reasons we've, we've touched on in other videos why there is no upgrade options at the, at the, at the moment. This isn't just Sony being a pain and not working on this it is simply a case of ssds right now in the commercial environment are just not fast enough and therefore if you go out and buy uh, a wd black one of the new 850s or you go for like a samsung 980 pro or you go for an iron uh, fire cuda 520 chances are these drives are still not going to be fast enough and therefore ps5 has taken that position where they've gone we're disabling that m2 nvme until the SSDs that can give that speed for the performance of PS5 become readily available. Again, we've touched on this in a lot more detail in the other videos where we talk a lot about NAND technology and AAA and uh, MLC NAND and stuff like that. But at CES this week, uh, uh, CES 2021, which has become an all digital affair because of the pandemic, let's be realistic, of course it had to be digital this year, it's only safety first and that, but... They are talking a lot more about the Fizon E18. Now, this is something, again, we touched on very lightly in a previous video. The Fizon E18, or give it its full title, the Fizon uh, PS5018E18, but we're just going to call it the E18, is a controller. Now, Fizon produce currently that, you know, all of the top brand NVMEs utilize their controller. Now, there's a few of them that don't. WD has got some in-house controllers they use, but even some of the other, um, SanDisk and stuff like that, are who are part of WD, part of the whole family, do use Fizon controllers. And the E18 should have been released by now, and there's been some tech samples sent to websites like Tom's Hardware and stuff like that, but... They are revealing a lot of this right now as we speak at CES, the E18 controller. Now, I'm not going to go into the tech specifics, um, you know, the individual cores that are inside and, you know, the general build of it and the capacities they're going to go, probably up to about 4 TB, starting at about 500 gig there or thereabouts. But what's important is this controller. This controller, much like the CPU in a computer, is where the magic happens. The interface at the end, the NVMe, that outputs it to the connected system that it's plugged into. 
the bigger chips, the NAND on the board, these are the ones where the storage capacity lives, but the controller is the magic. The controller in conjunction with um, DRAM inside is where that data is throughputted to the NVMe connection. PCIe Gen 4 times 4 which allows up to an 8,000 megabytes per second throughput. Right now there's been that enormous bandwidth of 8,000 megs but most SSDs have not had the controller that can fill that 8,000. So technically PCIe Gen 4 times 4 any SSD has the bandwidth of 8,000 megs, but it didn't have the controller in order to push the data out at that speed. And this is where the 18, uh, the E18 fires on controller is very, very important. Because with this rolling out, when it becomes more commercially available, and other SSD brands have already started revealing uh, their fires on E18 SSDs, these are the SSDs who will almost certainly be compatible with the PS5 when they enable that. We are talking about the Sabrant Rocket 4 Plus. That was one that was recently revealed and it's cropped up a little online. It's not commercially available. And again, do not buy any SSD until the PS5 uh, issues its compatibility list. But these are the SSDs that allow in excess of 7,000 megabytes per second read and write, I believe 7,400 megabytes per second read. These are the SSDs that are going to be the ones that are going to be compatible and everything before it either ps5 will go not compatible or it will go compatible but only for ps4 games so this is going to be where the ps5 um compatibility list is the key now on top of the sabrant rocket 4 plus there's also going to be a kingston ssd now yes i'm reading slightly off my script because again it is called uh, the kingston ghost tree that is their code name for this ssd and this ssd again uses the Fison E18 and it's a 7000 meg read write SSD. They revealed this SSD at CES 2021 with hopes of releasing it by the spring. Again, we've talked about the E18 before. This controller should have arrived by now. Those tech samples had already been sent to reviewers and obviously limitations such as uh, the ongoing pandemic effects on the supply chain. All of that has made the difference in terms of production and the R&D on these SSDs, which is why the technology of these new SSDs is coming later than the release of the PS5 itself. Now, a number of you in my previous video did highlight that how comes the SSD has that performance internally, but the external drives don't. Why is that? Well, that's because the internals of the PS5 are directly on the board. It's soldered to the board and it is proprietary. They have removed the interface completely. The interface of the NVMe inclusion there, it's not a drive inside the SSD. It is an arrangement, I think it's semi-circular arrangement of those NAND chips working directly with the motherboard on the PS5. Now, Again, a lot of us want to upgrade, myself included, and of course, as the um, availability of P um, PCIe Gen 4x4 um, uh, E18 equipped controller SSDs become available, we will of course test them out here. But once again, until PS5 ticks that little box in the firmware that allows it, then unfortunately we're going to be waiting just about as long as you. I think I've covered up just about everything. Again, do check out Fizon and their range of controllers. It's incredibly technical, but chances are if you've seen a very fast SSD in the last few years, it's been one of their controllers that has been the driving force behind it. So although we do not have a date for when the PS5 will enable, um, and I say we, all of us, will enable external storage on the PS5, I think this is a very, very positive step where we're seeing more SSDs with the E18 controller, and although the E18 we have known about for the better part of a year, it's only now that we're seeing it in fruition, we're seeing it being presented by the individual SSD commercial brands, and I think this is where PS5 are gonna start looking at that compatibility. But let's end this video before it gets any more repetitious. If you have any other questions or videos that you want to see, on PS5 expandability, let us know below. We've got a few little bits waiting in the wings here, but again, we're not going to publish anything with regards to external storage until we have got the ability to do it. We've got all the hardware, 
we're just waiting on that box to be ticked in the firmware. Thank you so much for watching. And again, click subscribe because this will probably be one of the first channels that tells you about when PS5 will enable that expanded storage. So when I can tell you, we can all get in on it. But thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to learn more. And otherwise, I will see you next time.